culturally on tour we get to see so many different places. I always look forward to coming to Europe just because it's almost like a breath of fresh air. So we go to New York, LA and then back through Paris and obviously Paris has some of the greatest architecture in the world. Hotscore, it's sort of like a nice little town. Just a full little village town, a um, couple main streets, that's it. Hotscore is part of the, the Forest Le Lande, which is a really big reserve here in, in France. There's a little harbour and there's a ton of cool little fishing boats there. Come somewhere that, you know, is thousands of years old and there's so much history and tradition is, is pretty cool. The beaches are so beautiful, the sun sets over the ocean every afternoon. The sand dunes pretty much are kind of, you know, untouched and I think that's why we get such good beach breaks here. Every day you wake up, it's never the same. Um, and even in the one day, it can change four to five times just because the tides are so, so crazy. One minute you're watching perfect barrels and you go out and it's going to be like high tide and, and just fun, rippable walls. It looks like we've got a fairly promising forecast so you know, I think there's a fair bit of anticipation in the air. This morning I woke up and I wasn't expecting a lot in the morning and uh, it's definitely picked up faster than I think most of us expected but uh, it's probably you know three to four foot solid and there's some bigger waves. The round one is kind of one of those rounds where you definitely, I mean, you want to win because uh, you get an automatic drip bid into the third round but you know you can kind of feel out boards, feel out the sandbar, the kind of the waves you're surfing so if you don't win the round one you do have another chance and that kind of makes it exciting. Brett was ripping, Brett surfed really, really good and um, yeah, I just got lucky with a couple of barrels and uh, yeah, got through. But there was some good surfing, fanning went off, Michelle Brez had a really, really sick wave in his heat, he got a nine. We have moved into round two for the afternoon. Joel's out there in the water now, and uh, I guess you know there's going to be some pressure on Joel and on, on Jeremy. You know, obviously being the top seeds to have lost. We got two small scores, average score. It was enough to beat Parco today. It's uh, it's a dream come true for sure. Day two now and the waves are like six feet and pumping. I think the swell's kind of kind of found its feet and it's coming in with solid lines. Just down here at the beach having a coffee, watching the last part of round two. And uh, we're gonna go into round three after this, so pretty excited. There's a bit of action for round three, so I'm just going to hang around and watch. I think Dane and Jordy have got a heat, so they're both back from injury. The same injury. <laughs> they both got sore ribs. So uh, I guess they're on even playing field. But uh, that'll be fun. Those guys are nuts to watch. So I'll be here for that. I'll probably have another coffee. Yeah, it was a pretty tough heat. There weren't too many waves. I got, kind of got two quick ones in the beginning. I'm stoked to make it next round. Uh, haven't been competing for a while, so it's good to be back and getting my feet in the wax. Yeah, it was just terrible. It just seemed like we were never in the right spot and, you know, halfway through the heat we both had ones. It was just one of those heats. You know, you might have won it last year, but, uh, you know, those, that always changes.
Jeremy hurt himself, so I'm pretty sure he hurt his ankle in a barrel. I don't know how he feels now, but I, I saw him, you know, like not feeling great. But I hope he's going to be fine for, for the next round, yeah. Pretty quick one for me actually, just open up the few fun little lefts right at the start and I just had a really fun heat, it's pretty much like a free surf for me. Woke up this morning, swells dropped a bit, um, the men's are off and the king and grums are on and they are lighting it up out there. Like, I've seen some big scores go down, some big airs from these groms, like really loving how committed they are. The king of the groms is probably the biggest comp for juniors in the world, under 16. All the best juniors from all the world qualify for it. I know my little brother is here competing and it's one of the best things for him to you know, come to these events and see how the, you know, the guys on the World Tour run, run their show and how they prepare for a heat and then you know, the little guys get their crack at it too and you know, they get the same facilities, the same training gear and, and they get to go out there and rip it up in front of potentially some big crowds. Being a part of the CT is, it means a lot actually. And Cook's Lover is putting a lot of effort into it and I'm really stoked. I've it. actually competed in this event as a, as a junior and um, when I was here competing in this event and it was, it was actually one of the coolest things, it was my first like overseas competition. Yeah, this is a good contest to progress in surfing. Um, Maddie Burning went on to surf in the Quicksilver Pro in Australia and Gabrielle Medina is now qualified for the CT. Yeah, I remember two years ago Gabriel won the, uh, the same event. Yeah, he got two tens and ended up making the CT like two years later, so that's something that everyone's probably looking up to. I think it's pretty amazing to see what a contest like King of the Grums can teach the kids. You have someone like Gabriel Medina who won this contest, the King of the Grums, two years ago and now he's competing in the main event and could potentially take the win at Quick Pro France. It's not all about surfing here at the Quicksilver Pro France. We're down here at the DC All In Show to check out some awesome music and also we've got the best FMX and BMX riders going to put on an awesome demo for us a little bit later. Check it out. Weatherman this morning down here in France. When this fog lifts, which could be any minute or any hour, we're going to be back on. And um, yeah, the tide's pretty good right now, so hopefully it lifts sooner than later. If you win your heat, you go to the quarters automatically. Usually, you have three men in the in that round four heat. But like I said, Jeremy Flores is injured, so there's only two guys in it. 
it's, it's really hard to watch my heat and the waves look so fun and it's just too bad it happened now at that time. I had fun in that heat, a bit more relaxing being a three man and knowing that no one loses. So um, start getting into round five right now, but I'm gonna uh, put my feet up and wait for the quarterfinals, thankfully. Bit of an average heat for me, I, but still I had a lot of fun out there. I had chances, I was going for big airs and <laughs> didn't really turn out the way I wanted and, and I was pretty bummed, but um, just to see a kid, you know, a big smile on his face when I come in kind of perked me up and I gave him my rash shirt. He was soaked and kind of got me over it straight away. lot of waves coming through so you can kind of let loose a little bit and go for it a bit more and, and that's what I did on my first wave and started with a seven something with an air and and then just backed it up at the end of the heat but yeah there was a lot of waves out there and you know the wind's coming into those left so the opportunity is there if you want to go for it. The fog doesn't come and I think the swell's meant to stick around so could make for a good final day. Andy owned this event, um, and it was it, it made sense because he he grew up surfing beach breaks and reef breaks, and and out here you just never know what you're going to get. You don't know if you're going to get barrels or maneuvers or whatever it was. And Andy was always the guy that I kind of looked to to kind of set the pace here, and the waves really seemed to suit him. So Andy surfing here in France is like it just seems to suit it, and he seems to always find some kind of fire and drive every time he comes to France, leading to this like kind of back quarter of the year and it, it, it just seems to lift and always seems to get a good result here. He's one of those guys that any conditions, if it's one foot, 20 foot, the guy was just phenomenal. He just had no fear, he just went at it like a bat out of hell pretty much and um, I think sometimes that's what you need over here. Yeah, Andy just seemed to be really in tune with the waves here and, and every year you know, I think for two or three years in a row, he was just the guy to beat. I lost to him, I think, maybe the year he got second. He made the final with Neko, and Neko somehow um, squeaked past Andy in that final, and then Andy went um, three in a row. I didn't actually get to surf against him again. I was really hoping to make the final with him in 03. There were some classic waves at, at Gravier. Perfect barreling rights, and he beat Phil McDonald in the final there. Yeah, I mean, I will never forget watching him, um, you know, in that final. I think it was against Phil McDonald, and um, it was it was timeless, you know, the lines he could draw here. And so I remember one final he had with Bruce that was just incredible. The waves are huge, and I definitely, that was definitely the reason why Andy and Bruce were in the final together there, that was, it was just massive. For them to get the surfer final to get together, you know, as brothers and in amazing ways is something that, um, you know, no one really ever gets to do and um, when it's in perfect, you know, eight to ten foot surf and the sun was out and there was thousands of people on the beach, I think that would have been a pretty special moment. Bruce was having a bit of a tough year and Andy was just in the middle of his you know, these crazy ball terror three world titles. Beside myself, this is probably one of the most memorable wins of my whole life, for sure. 
Uh, I have my brother in it, and we in the south of France, the wave 10 feet. You know, the waves are so good out there. And it was awesome. I mean, catch a good wave, get Jessica right back out. It was just a dream day. Everything worked in my favor, and I uh, just can't be, couldn't be happier. All day long! Really stoked to surf a final with my brother. I mean, you know, we've never had a, you know, a final together, and we're sitting out there just like being at home. I think for all of us it's a pretty exciting time. I know we'd all really love to see Andy here still um, battling it out with everyone and you know he, he was the kind of guy who really pushed like he didn't back down from any challenge for anybody anywhere but um, you know Mick also arguably has the maybe the second best record uh, you know so certain guys have some kind of affinity with, with the, the event here. When I, when I first started coming here I um, you know I found it really difficult and I actually purposely made a, an extra trip to come and sort of hang out and, and surf the, the QS event yeah from then on sort of you know sort of set up my um, you know, my love of the joint. I guess, you know, obviously winning winning the event um, a few times has, has been memorable. Last year, beating Kelly in the final, that was, um, you know, the, the waves that last day were incredible. And, um, you know, I didn't even really care if I was in the contest or not. I was just dropping to get barreled. And um, it's definitely a, a, a special thing to be a part of the only five people that have won the event over the 10 years. Um, you know, I guess those guys that that I look at who have won, um, you know, they've all got something special. Yeah, for me, I don't know, man. I, I'm gonna have to like stab the guy I'm surfing at or something because <laughs> I keep coming in second or third every year. I've had so many seconds and thirds at this contest; it's driving me nuts. But um, you know, that's that. Like I said, that keeps you hungry and that keeps you um, wanting to go one better. <laughs> Well, it's finals day at the Quick Pro France. Uh, we've got eight surfers remaining. We're into the quarterfinals, so it's definitely the business end of the competition. Taylor Knox against Michelle Borez. It's next heat, Gabriel Medina versus Kelly Sader. Jordi Smith, Alejo Maniz, and Taj Burrows versus Julian Wilson. So those are the eight surfers remaining, and it's, it's safe to say that they've been the, the standout so far in the event. I just kind of tried backing it up and backing it up. I made a couple mistakes myself, but in the end, uh, it, it didn't cost me. Right at the end, got a little nugget left and did what he does and got a nine doing some pretty sick turns and a big punt, so Kelly's out. Uh, today, I just, I just couldn't get in sync with the waves, so. Look, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Gabriel wins this contest today. I mean, he, he'll win, he'll probably win a, a couple contests next year on tour, and I'd say he'd, he'd probably by next year be within striking distance of a world title.
Julian and Geordie. Really, really exciting finish. Both of them just, you know, realised that uh, they had to start flaring up towards the end to get the scores, and they both did. It would have been great if they'd done that from the start. They showed what they can do towards the end with some amazing surfing. Yeah, Jules got it. We just like so pumped right now to see him doing good right now because he, that's his second contest, you know. Gabriel Medina is an inspiration. It's crazy how good he is, and he's on the tour right now and just put out Slater. And it's crazy that we're expected to do the same thing he did in two years, and he's an animal. I think both these guys have never been in a final before, Julian and and also Gabriel. So I mean, they're both going to be going to be going for it and, and trying to get that win. But these guys will just be going crazy, I guess. To see both guys in a final, that's that's great, you know. they they pretty much been uh, surfing really well uh, during the whole event and uh, I'm pretty sure both of them will be in the top 10 next year. Julian had like two really good scores already, but it's one minute to go and Gabriel just did, I think, the best wave of the heat. So, yeah, he, he might get the, the trophy, I guess. Foi, foi meio louco, né? Eu tava aqui no King of the Gum dois anos atrás e agora eu acabei de ganhar de novo, só que no WCT, então é um lugar especial assim pra mim. E, e trouxe muita alegria, muita. Então gosto de estar aqui, ainda mais com a minha família, então me ajudou bastante. É um sonho que está se realizando de muitos outros que ainda vão se realizar. É, então. Meu primeiro sonho eu já, já realizei de ter entrado no World Tour. Meu segundo sonho eu realizei que eu, eu bati o Kelly na, nas quartas. Meu terceiro sonho eu acabei de ganhar uma etapa do World Tour. E agora meu quarto é ser campeão mundial. E é isso que eu vou buscar. <risos>